with a beautiful beaker. It ends up lasting about three days to fully, fully develop this loaf full of flavour. But we're going to start right here. So I've got a small amount of bowl and it's very, very similar to the Casariccio recipe that we used before. I've just made a few little slight tweaks and hopefully you'll really, really like it. So all we need to start with is 206 grams of water. So we start with the water. Okay. And then we just need half a gram of yeast. And the yeast will go into there. And then to that, we're going to add our flour, which is, of course, double zero flour. Let's put the, go on the scales. Um, and we're looking for 231 grams of flour. So that's just slightly more. Okay, so I obviously got myself completely confused when thinking that this was going to fit in here. Bear in mind it's going to rise, so there's, there's no room for it to rise at all. So we've got another bowl, not a problem. We'll get in there, give that a thingy around. So now, Okay, so it's evenly mixed. It's just how we like it. It's a fairly thick, thick, it's a fairly thick beak of this, yeah? No, I can't say that. Even on there. Okay, so our beaker is like that. Our hands are like that. I'm gonna give these a wash, then we'll cover it with cling film, leave it overnight for about 14 hours and that should have developed perfectly by that point tomorrow. So the next stage is the main ingredient stage. Um, really, really fun, really, really easy as always. So our starter now, it's at the point of being overripe. It is really, really ripe. Any longer and it's gonna start collapsing and we, it won't be as good for our bread. So we wanna use, we wanna start this dough right now. So, uh, first of all, let's take our flour. Now, to give this kind of a bit of texture and a bit of depth of flavour, we're going to add a bit of dark rye flour. If you don't have dark rye flour, can't get dark rye flour, can't be bothered to get dark rye flour, then maybe just try some wholemeal or anything else that will kind of, anything dark that will give the depth of flavour that we kind of want to get. So. We're just using 320 grams of white flour, and so again, this is Italian double zero. And then we're just going to put in 30 grams of this dark rye flour. So that takes the ingredients to 350 grams of flour. Next up, a tiny bit of yeast. We've got enough yeast in there, really, um, but just a little bit to help it on its way. So we're just going to put a gram of yeast in. Now to, like the Casariccio, to make this bread, we're going to give it two stages of water. So we start off with 210 grams, and then we're going to add in a little bit extra as well. It should be about 30, but hey, look, we can always adjust this if it doesn't feel right. So we'll weigh the 210 grams first. Brilliant, so that can go in with the bigger. And then we're going to weigh the other remaining water, 30 grams of water, to use later on. Okay, so then we're also going to add or prepare our oil, which is 14 grams. So it's really nice olive oil, the best you can afford. Really, get a really nice olive oil if you can. It will make a massive difference in this bread. Okay, so we don't normally bake with sugar, but this bread really, really does need that little bit of sweetness which will help with the uh, olive oil to give a really dark colour on the outside um, and a really light colour on the inside. Um, that's salt. We need salt anyway, so let's weigh the salt. And this is, so for this 11 and a half grams. Okay, now we're gonna weigh the sugar. 
and it's seven grams of sugar. So, next stage is the mixing time, and we're gonna add in all the ingredients bar the water, the sugar, and the oil. And we're gonna mix it up for about 10 minutes, so it gets really nice um, strength and hydration of the flour. And then we're gonna mix again for probably another eight minutes before adding the sugar and the oil. that snap in there that means that the dough is ready. Oh, this dough is smooth. Okay. The mixing time was 10 minutes slow, 4 minutes fast, then we dropped to slow for a minute and incorporated the water. Then after the, at the end of that minute we chucked in the sugar, then we mixed for three minutes on fast again. And then we added the oil and we then mixed that for probably another at four or five minutes until we got the texture that we wanted. And now we're, we're window painting. And that is when we know that the dough is fully worked and we can see through it like that. That's a really, that's a, that, that is the sign of a really good gluten structure. So, this is gonna be really, really fun. This now gets put in the fridge straight away. We're gonna keep the temperature down as cool as possible, and we're gonna leave it there overnight. We will put one fold in at some point, whether that's in the evening or in the morning. You just need to do one fold that fit around you, ideally halfway through, but not necessarily. It doesn't have to be halfway through. So that's the next stage, um, and I'll see you in the next video. So in the morning, that's our dough. Okay, so we're gonna take a lightly flat surface, just puff our dough on it. Next, we're going to try and pre-shape it, knocking out as much of the air as we can at the same time. So we'll leave that there to just relax for 10 minutes whilst we prepare our basket. So our basket is gonna need some flour. For this we're gonna use some of the dark rye flour. On top. That is probably gonna be easy. If we wanted to, we could add a bit of light flour underneath, so that kind of acts as a barrier as well. So you're going to get sort of two tones on that. So the cool refrigeration overnight, or that cool cold fermentation, is going to add loads of flavour to our dough because it's going to break down different proteins that are just more complicated, different starches, different proteins. It's just more complicated that the but they, it wouldn't be able to do unless it had that cool temperature and that long fermentation. So, sat out on the table there, we've lightly dusted it. Probably not enough. Okay. Okay. What we're gonna do is we're gonna try and mold this really, really quickly 
with by adding the least amount of flour to the inside of the bread. So let's just get over it. Put it over like that. Put it like that. And draw around. Okay, like that. Okay. Then we're just going to take a clean area of the table over here and just roll it towards us. And we're just going to try and knock out as much the air as we can. And then over onto the side there with a bit of dusted flour just to stop it sticking. Okay, so what we're now gonna do is we're gonna, I'm gonna clean the table, but I'm just gonna to explain to you what we're gonna to use to prove our bread in. This is basically a cheap little wicker bread basket that's kind of designed for uh, serving bread in. And uh, you see them in restaurants and that sort of thing, and they cost like about a pound, two pound, next to nothing. So what we're gonna do is line this first of all with a little bit of the dark rye flour and we're going to kind of two-tone this so a bit of the dark rye flour over the top like that and then I'm going to put a bit of white flour underneath so you're going to get two colours coming through uh, and that means that also the crust of the loaf isn't going to be too dark it isn't going to be too light it should just make it a little bit more interesting so that's going to be left like that. We're going to leave this to relax for another five minutes whilst I go and clean this table and I'll show you the next stage on the next video. Take our piece of dough that's been resting for five minutes and place it, place it down like that so the bottom is at the, so the top is now on the bottom. Make sure we've got enough flour on there so it doesn't stick. Then push it down as much as we can and then just go around each side and fold over. Okay. And just pull towards us to form into a ball. It is quite a wet dough, so it kind of uh, won't be perfect. Make sure we've got plenty of dusting in there, and in that goes like that. So, just going to sprinkle a bit more flour on the outside. And that will just stop the sides from sticking as it proves. And there you go. The moulding doesn't have to be perfect, it will, obviously the basket will support it as it is a wet dough. So don't worry if it's a little bit wiggly wobbly, um, as long as you can get it in that basket with a smooth edge around the bottom of it, So, which will actually, when we tip it out, be the top. If you try and get it that smooth, you're going on to a winner. So give it a go and I'll show you how we bake it in the next video. So three hours in the fridge, and uh, I've taken it out for about an hour beforehand. If you're gonna leave it ambient, um, you're gonna look at about two hours till it's ready. Um, the reason I put it in the fridge, just because I wasn't ready for the oven, and uh, yeah, that's why, basically. So, um, as always, we're gonna put it on a peel. We're gonna use a bit of the rye flour. That and a little bit of white flour. I'm going to spread it out a little bit because it's quite dense on there. Okay, I've got um, I've got my lane ready to go. So straight onto the top. Beautiful. And that is lovely and proved. That is perfect. Now this part is where you get to add your own cut that you want, really. Um, there's anything you can do in here. You could do a circle all the way around the outside. You could do the standard sort of cross. Um, you could do two crosses, or you could do two up there and two down here. Uh, you can really do what you want that excites you. Um, simplest way would just be one line, uh, and that will split. And that look might actually look quite cool. We're going to do that today. So, one line through the middle. And if you 
try not to do this, but if you don't quite get enough in the middle, just go back along with your blade, just to make sure that you're only getting the middle of the, the cut, not the outside, so you're doing so it looks as even as it possibly can do. So, there we have it, one nice cut through the middle, and this is gonna go in the oven with a load of steam, and this should puff up really, really nicely in the oven. So that's on 250 at the moment. We're gonna drop that down to 230. Um, and yeah, a load of steam there, a good amount of steam, and uh, that is gonna be great. So it's gonna take probably about 40 to 45 minutes to bake this loaf, because it is quite big and we want a lot of color on it. So what we'll do is we'll leave it at this temperature and we'll review it after about 25 minutes just to check that everything's going all right okay so we've got the bread exactly where we want it now it's been 25 minutes so i've set another timer for another 12 minutes and that allows for a full coloration and what we'll do then after 12 minutes is just open the door we're not going to open it now because we're going to try and keep the the pressure in there the steam in there um, until the last sort of five ten minutes so 25 minutes in we're going to put a timer on for 12 and then we'll take a look at it Okay, so the colour on the bread now is looking really, really nice. So we set a timer for uh, another 10 minutes. So it's 25 minutes plus another 10 minutes. Um, and then we're going to open the door, which will release some of the steam and help get that golden, crunchy crust that we want. Okay, so 35 minutes has now been up. So we're just going to open the door and that is going to release some of the steam. That's the equivalent of opening the damper. We're looking like we're nearly there now, so just five minutes like this, and that'll really get a nice, thick, crunchy crust. And there we have it. Beautiful loaf. Nice amount of colour on there. Absolutely stunning. Okay, so I ended up baking that bread uh, quite late last night, so it's been allowed to cool for the morning. And this is my breakfast. So I've got my coffee go. Let's just see what this bread looks like on the inside. Ah oh, yes. So you've got that nice open, irregular but strong crumb in the middle. It smells delicious. crust is going to be nice and terrible. Uh, let's take a little bit of butter. It should be kind of, well, this kind of colour, it's got that rye flour for it as well, isn't it? bread that you can just have with anything is it's got so many different types of flavor through it beautiful give it a go try refrigerating your dough giving it an extra day it works with a lot of breads as well really worth trying to add to get a bread from going yeah that's good to wow that's interesting and full of flavor so giving the bread an extra day in the fridge definitely try it